My name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please smash the like button, hit the bell, comment below. It all helps my channel and the dogs that I'll be rescuing in the future. Doesn't have any value to you guys, but it has great value to me. Um, so I did want to go over uh, a lot of things today. I apologize, it's been about a week since I've actually done a video. So, um, you know, apologize for that, but I got a time management thing that I'm, I'm worried, I'm working out since I've gotten back from Alaska. Um, you know, I've got this dog walking app. I've had to change my time around. So I'm, I'm kind of just getting used to everything, um, you know, because I'm, I'm mining, I'm investing, um, I'm bot trading, I'm doing this dog walking app, I'm working security management. So I'm, I'm kind of getting pulled in a lot of directions right now. That's because I'm trying, trying to transition out of actually working a nine to five job. If I can, you know, uh, as a manager, you obviously have to work longer nine to nine and I don't have time to do a, a lot of these crypto things when I need to. So um, that's kind of where we're sitting right now. But, you know, again, I'm, I'm going to go over some things that I've been watching YouTube, watching a lot of YouTubers, obviously, you know, for the past nine months. And I've kind of cut them down through the through the months to the ones that I think that are actually good. With that being said. Um, you know, are YouTubers to blame with all this, you know, pushing the market and, and you know, being shills and, and doing things for their own benefit and so on and so forth? Yeah, I mean, and not all of us, obviously, but yeah, a lot of us are obviously um, on here to, to tell everybody to, you know, what we are all are doing and, and how we're managing things and, and being successful and so on and so forth. But things you do have to, you know, ask yourself. Did the people that you're watching on YouTube actually make money and they're actually doing, you know what I mean, made good trades or was it just the market going up in that cyclical thing like in 2017, you know, 2016 and I think it went up a little bit too. Um, you know, was that um, uh, a good thing uh, that, or, you know, was they actually saying that they were savvy investing or they just got lucky? Because they are holding some Bitcoin and some Litecoin and some Ethereum and so on and so forth. Every gun went up and now they look like they're savvy investors. Um, it's just a good question to, to ask yourself, you know, through this stuff. Um, uh, it's been a hard year for everybody. You know, I haven't made uh, any really dramatic gains that really at all. Uh, I've just been offsetting a lot of losses and obviously working as much as possible um, to offset that, you know, I'm not working hard, just when I'm working, you know, just like everybody else. So, um, you know, a lot of things you do have to, you know, wonder again, is technical analysis really a big thing that everybody should be, you know, looking into, um, you know, how do you weigh that stuff and so on and so forth. And it really all depends on your goals, but I'm going to give you some basics through here on this video and see, you know, maybe you can, can adjust it to your own life. But it'll give you a basics at least maybe to, to kind of think about of how I'm doing things and maybe you can use it in your things and so on and so forth. You know, you know, comment below and tell me if I'm doing things wrong or if you think that uh, maybe I'm doing I'm putting too much emphasis on one thing and not enough emphasis on another uh, when it comes to sentiment, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. So, um, you know, we'll get into that here. So, uh, you know, again, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below. And uh, we will, uh, it all helps my channel and the dogs I'll be rescuing. So, uh, you know, let's get right into it. All right, so I am showing you the right screen. So great. All right, let's uh, look at the market cap, 217 billion. Bitcoin dominance, 53%. So it's actually gone up since the last time. And um, you know, let's look at the coin market cap. I'm looking at the 24-hour changers at the moment. Um, let's see if this does. I'm usually got this all set up. I keep telling myself I'm not going to use Google and I got to go to Brave um, search engine. And first thing, it always pops in my head, just click on Google. So I, I got to get rid of that. I just keep forgetting about it. So anyways, uh, Bitcoin is at 6,700, okay? Bitcoin dominance at 53, so it's gone up, you know, three, four hundred dollars uh, from where it was kind of flatlining, uh, baselining, and Ethereum went down under 300, stayed around 275, and it's gone up six bucks as composed to 300, 400 dollars for Bitcoin. Okay, so now Bitcoin's starting to get away from the pack again. Not much is really following it. 
and we all want to see, you know, at least I'm used to seeing that pattern. I'm not really a pattern finder. I don't look on this stuff to look for patterns. But if, if they're obvious, they're obvious, you know what I mean? And when the pattern skews from itself, it's pretty obvious when it skews. So Bitcoin is now skewed, I would say, away from the pack again. And it usually happens on these green days like this. Um, it's it's kind of lately anyway. So it's kind of kind of something to think about, something to look at. I'm not saying anything is really analogous, but the Bitcoin dominance obviously takes its effect. But on this last little rise right here, on this last three three hundred and fifty dollar rise, nothing's rising with it for the most part. So at least in the top, you know, twenty, not much is rising and kind of going up on their own tangent again. So is that a good thing? Wow, you know, I, I don't know. You know, at this point, you know, if we all think that Bitcoin was supposed to, supposed to go back up to twenty thousand. What's going on? You know what I mean? If, okay, Bitcoin goes at 20,000. What's going on with everybody else? Is everybody else now differentiating? We shall see. All right, so let's get into 24 hour changes real quick. Substratum, all right? 23%. Wow. I mean, just boom. Aeon, that's an internet of things, uh, cross chain internet. And that's good, 20%. Wan chain, good to see. Walton chain, nano, icon, ontology, releases in the top 10 taking a nice big spike right now it's crazy to see that these these i mean look at the, the volatility in this just on a weekly basis bi-weekly basis it's crazy um so let, let's get into some things you know i wanted to touch on technical analysis okay i show everybody the fibonacci i show everybody you know kind of trend lines this is on an annual basis on our last uh you know i would say double tops and it dropped down and now we're at a top again are we going to top again and double top and go down? There's a lot of questions, obviously, you, that we, we can obviously ask ourselves um, till we die. You know what I mean? Till we're out of money and we all die, obviously. But, you know, again, it's not a loss until you cash out. Um, you start moving it in, tethering, so on and so forth, may stave you a little bit uh, in the short run. So technical analysis, okay? A lot of people, especially traders, macro traders, don't look at technical analysis. They're all about fundamental analysis. When it comes to stocks, what's the business about, so on and so forth, so on, you know, with stocks. With coins, there's a little bit, there, there's a difference. I would say there's a little bit of, a, of analogous there, you know, that's comparable, but not much that I'm kind of finding out in the last, you know, 10 months now, eight, nine, 10 months that I've been uh, really focused into cryptocurrency and getting away from the stock market. Um, so we move all these things from the stock market, the MACD, the RSI, your Fibonacci's, your, you know, your trend lines, we were looking for double tops, everything we do in the stock market. Okay. Stock market is regulated by the SEC. It's a level playing field. It's fair to the most, for the most part, um, for people to play. So Fibonacci works, uh, you know, and it relatively works on the cryptocurrency market, but really I don't see very much analogous with the stock market. If you're trying to read it the same way, there's differences in the way you need to read these things. That's based on the volatility of this market. Um, your corridor line is going up, you know what I mean? Your angles, um, your Ichimoku cloud, that's this green cloud that's in the back here with the red, uh, that kind of is kind of foresight, but it's, it's, it's definitely not 100%, it's definitely not even 50%. It's just showing you a, a trend. These are just trends. That's kind of where you have to look at technical analysis. How much percentage do you want to put on technical analysis? Okay. So when it comes to day trading, this volatility is a day trader's dream. Day traders love this stuff because they can really show you on a candle basis, they can look back a few candles and show you and, and they can read these and, they, and it, the languages only speak so many words. So only, so only certain candles can speak to other really candles coming forward. Now you may say, no, that, that doesn't make any sense. But really, as a day trader, you're looking at it from a 24 hour, uh, period. So you're looking at five minute candles, one minute candles, 15 minute candles, 30 minute candles. It's not core trading. It's not swing trading. Now I'm starting to learn swing trading and core trading in this volatile market. It's not going to work really that, that well until we start getting a better lay playing field. The SEC and the CFTC comes in and levels the playing field with the futures market. Over the counter trading gets in check. Tether gets in check. A lot of manipulation out there. So core trading, swing trading low 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 percentages of of actually um gaining money macro trading obviously is going to be the big one and then your day trading 
This is a day trader's market. If you want to make money on a short term, day trading is what you really need to start learning. That's my opinion. I, I you know, I've had mentors in stock trading and they best definitely were, were day traders. They had three, four, five screens up and they're running off, you know, those screens. They work two, three hours a day in the morning and they're done. And if they had a bad day, they work two, three hours in the afternoon as well and they're done. So it's it's just the way that it it's get look gets looked at. Now I, I follow a lot of YouTubers and I am now hearing a lot of the guys that I've been following, uh, guys and gals uh, that I've been following that um, technical analysis is not something you should be looking at. It has nothing to do with the market. It's not a company. I'm sorry. It's it, it's like fundamental analysis. You can look at something and look at the company and go, oh okay, um, that makes sense. That's a great project. Um, the you know token metrics look good. Everybody's into it. Uh, it's a genius idea. It's got a prototype, so on and so forth. When you're looking at ICOs and new projects coming out, technical analysis, okay, is again more for trending and kind of just shows you that it has data for you to kind of work off of moving forward. Not saying the data is going to, to repeat itself, obviously. So that's why I say it's not a swing trade and a core trade. It's too volatile. There's no way you can really, you know, show that there may be a dip, in the, you know, like a stock. You can look at the fundamentals and go, okay, well, you know, it looks like, you know, let's say you're into corn, you know what I mean, obviously, and it's winter time. Well, obviously, the stock's not going to go up until the deals are made and, you know, uh, harvest, uh, grow time is on time, harvest time is on time, and then boom, your stock goes up. And just as a, you know, really, really fundamental example. Um, so you're into corn, corn goes up seasonal, seasonally, right? So then you know to get in when it's low and then you know to sell when it's high right after harvest or during harvest, however it works, okay? We can't do that. We, we can't do that on the crypto market. So that's what I'm trying to, you know, kind of find those type of analogous things with the stock market. Not the way fundamental, you know, uh, te technical analysis works. But the way fundamental fundamental analysis works with technical analysis as trending. Now, there is no trending right now. I mean, a lot of these coins have no trend. Bitcoin really has the only trend going on. And uh, everybody else just is struggling um, until uh, the FUD goes away. And there's a lot of FUD out there right now. So technical analysis, fundamental, and your sentiment. Make sure you have your percentages right. Are you day trading? You might want to have more percentage on your fundamental or your technical have more percentage on your technical in tandem with your with your fundamentals, okay? Because everything changes on a day-to-day -day basis when you're a day trader. A swing trader, core trader, your, your technical analysis in crypto world should be really low. You still need to look at it. You still need to kind of take keep things in perspective because you see, you see huge drops, huge dips. I mean, this is Bitcoin on Coinbase and you see these huge dips like this. I, I mean, it, it can't stay down so it has to go up a little bit. So, and that's what it's doing right now. It's going up a little bit. You know, it's not going up dramatically, but it's gone up. So someone just made three, $400 if they're a day trader, uh, even two, $200, you know what I mean, in a day per Bitcoin. If they know how to play these markets and read these candles behind it. So, um, the, you know, there's ways to do it. This is a day, this is day, these are day candles. So you can't really run off this as a day trade. So let's look into that real quick. All right, I just want to show you this, this, this stuff real quick if you're looking into it as a day trade. Okay, so now as you can see um, on the 15 minute candles, which is usually what I run off of as a day trader. So you don't have to you know, click on things so, so quickly, um, but you can read things a lot you know, slower. You don't have to be so quick on the draw. Um, but you look at these candles and, you sh and it shows you just behind it what has been going on. And these candles show you, I mean, they talk, they got language. Um, there's a couple guys that I, uh, you know, I had, I had as a uh, uh, mentors and then a couple guys I, I watch on YouTube and they both saying the same thing when it comes to the candles and the way they talk. These are investors that have people, investors under them that they back, that they give money to, to, to do this type of trading on stock market. Now, when it comes to the cryptocurrency market, it is analogous in this way when it comes to the language of the candles. And man, do they speak volumes. I, I'll tell you what, they speak volumes. Learn your candle language, look back maybe three, four you know, candles, depending on what kind of candles you have, 15 minute candles, five minute candles, and read those candles and you can make quick trades, 
quick trades on which way things are going to be going. That's my opinion on things. I'm not a financial advisor, but you definitely need to start learning these things. And it doesn't take that long really to learn these things, um, you know, because there's you know, internet, you know, we have a whole system of information. So let's move forward at a technical analysis, fundamental analysis and sentiment analysis for, for a second here. And uh, I was looking into lending, you know, uh, these blockchain cryptocurrency lendings. You know, I got a buddy um, that is interested. Actually, he's my cousin uh, and one of, one of my buddies, obviously. And um, he lives in a different state and he is interested in, in getting loans for, for building, you know. And, uh, and there's a, a coin out there called Build One X and it hasn't come out yet. So I'm kind of looking into that, but it's its own little ecosystem but they're involved with everybody, all the big builders. So anyways, moving forward, I'm kind of interested in these loans, what they have now. Well, what do they have in service now that uh, works for everybody? Now looking into SALT, okay, I'm not gonna really look into this too much, but I'm, I'm just gonna show you that I looked into this and SALT is for big money. Um, and it only works in so many states. So be sure, again, they have some sort of membership that you have to pay like 3,000 bucks to just to be a member. And they won't even tell you that um, it, you, you can only be done in these certain states. You know what I mean? I think Alaska was one of them. Uh, Seattle was another one. And, and, you know, not many. You know, California was not one of them. Um, New York was not one of them, I, I believe. New Jersey. But, yeah, it, it was crazy. I was like, wow. And I think the minimum they do is like 100000 bucks or 50000 But It's big money. You know, they, they loan big money, so they want you. It's just like the banks. you got to meet, you know, a big certain criteria. Um, so salt lending, salt loans. And then Nexo. Nexo has been out for a little while and I was looking into this and this is actually just a collateral based uh, crypto loan that you hold your own crypto. You put it on this wallet. They, you know, they have their own wallet um, with this. You put it on the online wallet. You can check it from your phone and, and from the app. And uh, you put, you know, Bitcoin, Ethereum, I believe Bitcoin Cash and one other one on there. And you just hold it there and then they will give you um, a certain amount of loan off that crypto and it, you know it's the way they do it you know it's say say the crypto goes down you, your your price of your crypto goes down and you have a loan out there well they have like three options for you to pay it back you can add more crypto you can you know pay it off or you you know um, pay the payment um, as because it, it'll be a higher payment because you know the crypto went down so there's ways of offsetting this loan and I was really interested in that even just for me is getting a crypto loan to uh, kind of scale my mining business up because as a miner, they really like miners because you can just tag on to your, your address to that mining and it'll just pay out to that miner, to that to that wallet, the Nexo wallet from the miner, which is great. So it's basically paying for my loan. I won't have to do anything. I just keep pumping it in there automatically. So Nexo, between Salt and Nexo, Nexo is the, be the best one I think is good to see. So, all right, just making sure that I'm actually showing you what I really want to show you guys and I got enough light for this. So uh, lending, Nexo and Salt, okay? Trading, uh, 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 technical analysis, your TA and your FA and your SA, which is your sentiment analysis. Make sure you have your percentages right on these, okay? Make sure that your goals are set and you don't change these for anything, you know? I've been doing bot trading to offset my losses and it's working out great. Did I have to add a little, you know, I have to spend a little bit more money? Yeah, absolutely. But it's working out great for me now. You know, it, it's it's just a lot of adjustments. Uh, again, I watch YouTubers like Crypto Gnome. He has a lot of settings for a, a profit trailer and, and things like that. And he tries to help out, but his settings don't work for me. I had to adjust them, but they were good baselines to start from. And then I adjusted things from there to, to work off my budget and so on and so forth. And it's working out great. Um, I think I moved my camera, but all right. Sorry, guys. Uh, so moving forward, remember I was kind of going over crypto, uh, things you can do to make crypto without having to invest anything. And this Empower actually is really, really cool. I mean, it's just like Facebook. I post, I share, I list things. And uh, they gave me free, you know, spins at a wheel and I make free money that way. People like my things and I get cash for it. It's simple as that. Now the crypto coin keeps going up and down um, a little bit now. So, um, but I am making um, in power coin and in November I can start cashing this money out into fiat, into anything, into Bitcoin, into Ethereum. This is a great platform. Do you got to do work? If you're on Facebook all the time, I don't really consider it work. I'm on Facebook. So I just do this too as well. Um, and it works out great and I'm making some extra passive income. 
Uh, crowd holding is that other one that I was telling you about. You, you know, you can uh, so it's, it's projects. You know, new projects that are coming out. They ask um, the crypto world for their two cents about it. And this is Newcoin Network, and I'm actually looking into right now. And uh, they pay you 800 yep plus some uh, some Newcoin coins that they're uh, giving out as well. And again, you just give them your two cents. And if they like what you're saying, they'll give you coin for it. And I've already made some coin with them. So, um, you know, when I look into these projects like Newcoin, I look at the white paper. I'll look at their website. Um, I'll look at uh, their mat their metrics. You know, they have a one pager here um, that kind of shows you everything in a nutshell. And um, I believe this coin is still not even an ICO or pre ICO pre sale. And so I'm doing an ICO on there. And right now it's at like 32, 33 percent. So they're not going to like what I have to say really about this coin too much when it comes to an investor's point of view. Great project, very niche, but, um, you know, for creators and uh, uh, influencers. But, you know, the debt, the token metrics are off, uh, oh, way off. And they have distributions as well. And it's it seems kind of odd for something that's not gold backed and so on and so forth. So last but not least, Crypto Fear and Greed Index. 22 today, yesterday was 19, last week was at 27, the last time I was making a video. Um, and again, sentiment is a big thing. You, you really wanna find something that works for you. Crypto Fear and Greed Index is really kind of working off Bitcoin more or less than anything, but they do go off the volatility, momentum, the volume, social media, surveys, dominance, which is Bitcoin, and uh, trends, which is your technical analysis. So their they're you know, TA, is really 10%, you know, Bitcoin manipulation, social media, you know, they're going into Telegram and, you know, all these other ones. So um, I, I think I like this one. It works for me, but there are a couple other ones out there that actually work. And I actually use an AI one as well um, for crypto fear and greed. And it, man, it, it's blunt. It's really, really blunt. And that's what I like about it. There's no emotion with an AI. Is it right all the time? You, you can take it with a grain of salt because you do your own research and possibly, but um overall with an overview this crypto fear and greed index is usually you know pretty pretty well on so 22 on that so again i want to touch on with technical analysis your fundamental and your sentiment make sure you have your percentages right um i don't blame any youtuber out there that tells me things um and i, and I believe it that's my fault for believing it and not doing the research and if i did do the research and the market crashes it's not the youtuber's fault that the market goes down, you know what I mean? It, they've, they've, everybody's done their analysis and even their fundamental analysis. We all believe in projects like, you know, if you are into Cardano, um, Litecoin, you know, Bitcoin, um, you know, Mithril, uh, Ontology, uh, EOS, if you are one of those guys, I mean, I'm not, or per, you know, guys and gals, sorry, because um, there's a lot of gals in crypto world, which I love. And um, uh, so you gotta watch your, your, your projects. And if you're in those projects, Believe in those projects and hold your coins. You know, if you are going to stay, then you're just an investor. Move them to Tether, move them out into uh, fiat, and do something else with them to stave off your, you offset your losses. What I'm doing, like I said, what I'm doing is I am now bot trading. I am mining. I'm in uh, macro investing. I, I've, I've kind of slowed down on my swing trades and kind of do more core trades, but long term core trades. So it's more of a macro trading, uh, so to speak. Um, so uh, my percentage with technical analysis has gone down because my bot does all my trading for me on a day trades. So I just keep that in mind with my, uh, and if I see a major movement on my bot, then um, I adjust, I adjust accordingly, whether it's bear, bullish or sideways market. So if anybody's interested in those uh, settings, let me know. You know, I, I did mention I was going to put those up, but uh, I haven't really gotten any responses from anybody whether they are interested or not. So uh, again, you know, my name is Crypto Dog to the rescue. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell, comment below, and uh, it all helps my channel and uh, the dogs I'll be rescuing. Keep up the grind. <laughs>